Hello and welcome to Linux Leech. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get more than 4 gigabytes of persistence on your Linux Live USB key. So let's get started. Okay, the first step you need to take is you need to actually boot up Linux. So if you've got Linux installed on your computer, boot up Linux now. Or if you don't, I would recommend that you actually create a Linux Live CD and there's a link on the screen now showing you how to do that if you don't already know. But once that's done, what you then need to do is actually plug in your Linux Live USB key. So I'm going to do that now. And as you can see, it's mounted. So I'm just going to open up that. And these are all of the files that make up your Linux Live USB key. Now, just a bit of background information. The reason why you're limited to 4 gigabytes of persistent storage space is not due to limitations in Linux Live USB Creator or any other software. It's actually a limitation of FAT32. Now the FAT32 file system has got a limit on the size of a single file, which is four gigabytes. So if we just have a look at this file here, which is called casper-rw, this is actually your persistence file. And if we right click and click properties, you can see that it's four gigabytes. So what we're going to have to do is actually delete this and then we're going to recreate it, but make it bigger. So if you've actually been using your USB key, I would recommend that you actually back up all of the files that you've saved to it first before you actually proceed with this tutorial, purely because you don't want to lose any files. But if this is a fresh USB key that you've just made, then there's no problem in actually deleting this persistence file, which is what we have to do. So you can just go ahead and delete that. So now that that's deleted, what we need to do is we need to open up a program called Gparted. So I'm just gonna open that now. And you just have to enter your admin password. And once Gparted is actually booted up, what we need to do is we need to select our USB key from this drop down menu here. So this is my USB key here, and this is actually my internal hard drive. So I'm just going to select the USB key. And the first step we need to take is we actually need to unmount this. So if we just right click and click unmount, we're now going to be able to make changes to the file structure on this USB key. Okay, now that it's unmounted, what we need to do is we need to edit this partition here. So if we just right click and then click resize stroke move, we need to actually resize it down so that it's as small as we can get it. So once you've dragged that all the way to the end or as far as it will go, you want to make sure that you've got zero megabytes of free space preceding this partition. And the new size may vary depending on the distro that you're using. And your free space will vary depending on the size of your USB key. But you will actually notice that you'll have a lot more free space. And the last step we need to do is we need to align this to cylinders. So once that's done, you can just click resize stroke move. And that's basically shrunken that partition. The next step that we need to do is actually create our persistence partition. So to do that, we're going to right click on this unallocated space and we're going to click new. OK, so for our new persistence partition, we can actually edit the size of it or we can use all of the available space on the USB key. So I'm just going to do that. And there's a couple more things we need to do. So we need to align this to cylinders and create it as a primary partition, so that's fine. And the file system will leave that at ext2. And the most important part is to actually create the label. So if you remember before, the persistence file was called casper-rw, and that's casper with a lowercase c. So that's the label that we need to give our new persistence partition. So once that's all done, we just need to click add. And as you can see, we've got a new partition here, which is now 10.21 gigabytes. And 
we are pretty much done. So what we need to do is commit these changes to our USB key by clicking this green tick and we will get a warning that pops up saying that you may lose data but we're just going to apply that now and wait for the operations to finish. Okay, so just a quick note, you may have noticed that these two partitions have actually changed in size slightly and that's because I was actually getting an error saying that I was trying to resize this partition too small to actually accommodate the files that are contained within it. So what I did to fix that was I actually just increased the size of it slightly so you can see it's now 5 gigabytes and decreased the size of the persistence partition. So that fixed everything and I'm just going to pause the video here while I boot up a virtual machine so that we can see if this key actually works. Okay, so as you can see, I've booted up the Linux Live USB key and I've actually installed the guest editions on it so that everything runs nicely inside a virtual box, but you don't need to do that. And I've also copied over this folder onto my USB key and as you can see there it's 5.8 gigabytes. Now I did that for a reason and the reason is so that I can show you on the USB key where they go. So if I just shut down now and then go to my USB key from within Linux and click on the Casper RW drive you'll see that it's now not empty anymore and it's got all of the directories that it should have and if I just go to the home directory and then to the desktop you can see that it has actually saved my files there so they will be accessible every single time I boot from my USB key so that's how you can actually get more than four gigabytes of persistence on your Linux Live USB key. So it's especially useful if you've got like an eight gigabyte key, 1632. It will, the same procedure will work for any of those different sizes. So that's brought us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow Linux Leech on Twitter at Linux Leech and on facebook.com forward slash Linux Leech. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.